All right, every everybody, happy Saturday. Uh, welcome to Saturday training, guys. As you know, we do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So guys, get your notebooks out, get your pen. You do not want to miss these amazing speakers that we have today and all the great information and announcements. Um, and I'm glad you guys can be here and stay plugged in. This is super important, guys because we get so many of the same questions throughout the week. So we do this, we take out our time, we even record the call so you can go back and watch it. And we can see who watches the recording so that you guys have the information you need to be able to be super efficient throughout the week, to go through the process, to know what it is you need to do from whatever point you are at, whether you're licensed or unlicensed, or you're thinking about doing this business. So again, great job to everybody that's getting on. We need more people getting on. How do we do that? Message and call your team. Talk to them to the night before. Make sure they're plugged in and logged into Slack. Make sure they're on Facebook. Um, you know, this is super, super, super important to be on here because we're always getting better as a team and as a company. And it's always important to get these announcements, um, see who's winning, know who's doing what, but most importantly, getting the information you need to be able to apply it week to week so that you too can have success. Nobody on here is better than anyone else. We just have people that work harder. So if you work, guys, work works. All right. That's my piece on that, guys. As you know, every Saturday, I always start with the top 10 submit. Um, and this is week two of November. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We have coming in at number 10, Rakita, 8,066. Kali Somerville, guys, 8,171. Caroline, $8,884. Robert W., 9,558. Garrett R., I see some new people up here, 10,224. Kalista, 11,803. Austin, 12,876. Eugene M, 16,110. Ryan Urbanski, 17,014. And guys, there can only be one number one. Richard, 17,167. So great job to all of our top 10 submit. You too can be on there. Guys, just got to go to work, right? So let's talk about these announcements. Guys, please, please, please write this down. Number one, I can't stress this enough, work spots is so, so important. If you don't know about work spots, get to know it. Please do not download or sign up for work spots if you are not yet licensed. Um, it does not help you at all. You have to be licensed, you have to be contracted because what that does is it allows you to reserve a spot in any office that's close to you nationwide. It also allows you to plug in the people that you're hiring. Uh, in other states that's, you know, to an office that's close to them so that they have an environment to work out of. There's free Wi-Fi. You can print your leads. You have an environment. You are around and surrounded by top producers in real time who can help you. All right. But most importantly, the discounts on the leads, guys, you save so much money annually just by having work spots. I mean, I think this past week already, they've already They've already put out like three different types of discounts. So it's extremely important. And then side note, okay, if your manager or your business partner has work spots and you don't, they are not, they are not giving you their code, okay, guys? Sometimes the code is a one-time or a second-time use. In most cases, get work spots for yourself so that you can get the discounts for you. This is your business, not anyone else's, okay? So that's important. And you can actually screenshot the work spots uh, flyer here so you know where to go, how to download it. Please do not ask us how, how to download work spots. Everything is here for you. Please screenshot it or write this information down. Next, guys, let's talk about this. I, I, I've added this to the announcements because I feel like we can always get better at this. Please submit your numbers week to week. We are all adults. And please find a way to remember if you have to put a sticky note, a set an alarm. I mean, we really shouldn't have to talk about this, but it's super important. We don't have enough people submitting their numbers, guys. This is not just for you. This is also for your teammates as well. Your team is watching you. You have a duty to your team to be the example and to offer an opportunity, but you can't be the example if they don't know what it is. You have to submit and post your numbers, okay? This is also a way that uh, um, our admins, all right, and we have different admins. We have one 
for Fury um, and High Voltage. We have one for National, and we also have one for Allegiance. They all use this information to be able to post, all right, and to keep track of the numbers. So please make sure you are submitting your numbers. It is from Thursday to Thursday. I'm sorry, Wednesday to Thursday, I believe. Yes, Wednesday to Thursday. Please make sure you submit your numbers. Submit them Wednesday night so you don't forget because Thursday morning, I know some people go to work. You may have kids. You got a lot going on. So do it the night before so you don't find yourself forgetting or trying to scramble around to put your numbers in Thursday morning, okay? Also, post your numbers, guys. Again, the three places you post your numbers so you, know, you guys don't forget is FFL Fury, Slack Group, um, just numbers, Slack group, and our private Facebook national group chat on Facebook. Those are the three places you want to submit your numbers. I'll say those one more time so you guys can write that down. Um, FFL Fury Slack group, just numbers, Slack group, and Facebook. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, send a text message to your manager so that we can get you plugged in. All right, guys. Um, also, every Wednesday we um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a What's Next and Expansion meeting. This is also super important, okay? Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, make a lot of excuses on why they cannot get on that Wednesday call, okay? Guys, you want to make sure you're plugged in. If you're not happy with where you are, if you're not making the money you want to make, or if you're even here and you feel like things aren't moving as fast as they should, or you're not making any money, or you're not seeing the results, more than likely it's because you're not plugged in. All right, if you have a team or if you're looking to build a team and you don't yet know how to explain the business, let Family First Life work for you. We have our top producers on Wednesday that goes over the expansion meeting for the first 30 minutes of the call. All right, so that your, your new people can get all the information. They can come see what the hype is all about so that they can make a sound decision on moving forward. And then the last 30 minutes of the call, all right, is for anyone that's licensed or unlicensed, all right, that needs to know what to do from where they are. It's amazing to me how we don't have enough people asking questions um, on this call, yet the questions are being asked throughout the week when we're in the field and we're busy, all right? Don't get this confused. We're not busy enough to help you close business or answer questions that, or you know, information that we haven't gone over. It's extremely, extremely annoying when we get the same questions and nobody has the questions that they could have asked on a Wednesday call. Most importantly, guys, if you're plugged into those meetings, please pay attention, okay? We can hear when you unmute yourself and you're talking about something completely different or you're not paying attention, which is the, re and, and we can see the results in the field, okay? Please make sure you're on and paying attention, okay? Because we can tell. Last but not least, convention. All right, big decisions, guys, are made at big events. All right, a lot of the top leaders and producers that you're gonna hear or that you hear on a day-to-day -day basis or that you see posting in Slack that they're closing, they went to that big event. Guys, you'll be six months to a year behind anybody else that didn't go. And more than likely, if you don't go, you may not be here that long. You're gonna get all the information. Guys, you think national is popping off? You think our team is popping off? There's people doing way more stuff than us. There's people going through way bigger issues than us that are, are running through the fire and getting it done. And they can tell you and teach you what they're doing to be able to have the same success. So make sure you're registered. That's February 2nd to the 5th of 2022. So there is no excuse. Everyone on here has a license to go make money. Go make money and register. It is a free event, but you do have to pay for your hotel and airfare, okay? With that being said, I don't wanna take uh, any time away from our speakers today. Um, I am excited to announce the first speaker, um, Brad. He's been on here before, um, but I wanted, to, I wanted him to come on here again because I think this is the best person to definitely talk about uh, his, you know, his script, what he says when he dials, but also dialing CRM leads. Very often do I find and hear people trying to go a different route, trying to stay away from, and, and, you know, from the CRM leads. They say they don't work. They say nobody picks up. They're not answering. No, that's not the case. What I do know is that people aren't following the system, but this guy is week to week, month to month. And uh, I'm not going to take any time away from you, Brad. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, give us this information. If you can just give us a very short, brief story, because we've got a bunch of new people on here, and then go over your script and dialing CRM leads, you got about 10, 15 minutes. 
Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Driving, so if I start cutting out, just let me know and I'll kind of pull over. But uh, first off, thanks for having me on the call. These these calls are awesome. Um, it's every Saturday. So you're not gonna get this training anywhere else. I can promise you that. But uh, so yeah, foam screw up. Um, I'll be honest, the foams are definitely where we make our money. Um, I, Corinne texted me and asked me if I wanted to talk about in-home or foam screw ups. And I was like, well, I'm not good in the home. So let me take foam screw. Um, and so to not be good in the home, if you're good on the phones and you run enough appointments, you stumble across the money. Um, and that's the way I looked at it. So if I can schedule enough appointments and run enough business, then eventually the money will follow. Um, so pretty much I got three things I kind of want to touch on. Um, the first being mindset and scheduling. Um, so if you want to write this down, I'll kind of tell you the three things and then I'll touch on them real quick. Mindset schedule. The second is lead flow. And then the third is tonality when you're on the phone. So the first being mindset and uh, scheduling. Both of these are equally important, probably the two biggest when it comes to the phones. Um, so typically every dial day, um, which are normally Monday and Thursday, um, I'm up at 5 a.m. So 5 a.m. I'm up and uh, what I do is I start my coffee and then I go into the living room and I watch some podcasts. And um, my wife gets up about 6.30. We watch a little bit of Netflix. She heads out around 7 o'clock. Okay, that's how I get my morning going. At 7 o'clock, I call Will. So I don't know if you guys know Will, Will Crandell. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. We talk every day. And at 7 a.m. every morning, I call him. And we talk about the day and what we got going on and whatnot. And then at 7.30, I'm on the phone. And I'll be honest with you. From 7.30 to 9, 10 o'clock is when I book most of my appointments. And typically I'll have agents that'll want to start dialing at like 9, 9.30, and it just doesn't, just doesn't work out. Um, and to touch on mindset real quick, so quick story, but this is what really clicked with me when I first got started. Um, so we all go shopping, we go to the mall and to stores, right? And when we walk into the store, the first thing that meets us normally is someone that says, hey, can I help you with something? Or what are you looking, can I help you? And I always say, no, like I'm good, I'm just shopping, right? I mean, we all do it, it just comes out. So when we say that, it's just our natural instinct. And then five minutes later, I'm looking for that guy, like, hey, I need help finding this. So you have to carry that mentality over to when we call these leads. When they hit you with an objection, no matter what it is, that's all it is, is they're just spitting it out because that's what we do. So like, if they say I'm no longer interested, that's just what they say. Like, okay, perfect, look, I just gotta get you this information. I'll be out there tomorrow. Um, are you still working full-time, retired or on disability? So like, no matter what they say, just know that they need our help. Like they're just saying that because that's what they always say. Um, and when I realized that, it's kind of when things really clicked for me and uh, I was able to start booking a lot more appointments because no matter what they said, I was like, look, I'm coming over. So it is what it is. Um, and then lead flow. So lead flow, you basically want to make sure I tell all new agents, and this is the same thing Will told me when I got started, every dial day, try to get at least 75 new leads in front of you. And when I say new leads, um, I dial only CRM leads. So instant new internet one month three month um and you can get 75 to 100 doesn't matter you know the combination um but you want to make sure you have that many leads in front of you um and then tonality so when you're on the phones you really want to match the other person's tone so depending on how they answer um it's kind of where i meet them so if they answer like hey who's this hey, this is Brad, you know, I'm getting back with you. You put in that request and they're like, oh yeah, you know. So you kind of want to meet them where they're at. If they answer or talking real slow, I slow my voice down, you know. Um, that's a big, a big key as far as like meeting them where they're at. And then, uh, real quick, Corinne, you mind running through the phone script? Yep, let's do it. All right, so ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Corinne. Yes. Hey, Corinne, this is Bradley Murphy. I hope you're doing all right this morning. 
I'm fine. How can I help you today? Yes, ma'am. Look, I was getting back in touch with you real quick, Ms. Corinne. Um, you have put in that request for life insurance information. We have your date of birth at the 4 78 That's correct. Perfect. And now look, are you still right there in Beulahville at the 123 Main Street? No, I don't live there anymore. Perfect. It could be an outdated address. Um, are you still in Beulahville? Yes, I am. Awesome. Um, so, Ms. Grin, I'm the local field underwriter. Um, it's just my job to get you the full book, kind of go over what you can qualify for. Um, are you still working full-time, retired, or on disability? I work full-time. Awesome. Perfect. Now, Corinne, what time are you typically home from work? Um, maybe like 6, 6.30. Typically are home by 6, 6.30. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That actually works out really good for uh, my schedule as well. So tomorrow, I'm going to be out in Beulahville all day. Um, what I can do for you, I can put you down for around 7 p.m. to get this information out to you. Um, do you have a pen and paper nearby real quick? I do. Perfect. All right, so right now my name is Bradley Murphy. Yes. And I do have a confirmation code to give you for the call. It's 08 oh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I have you down from 7 p.m. tomorrow, okay? Yes. Ms. Graham, what is the updated street address for you, if you don't mind? Sure, uh, 123 Main Street. Perfect. All right, is that a house, an apartment, or? It's a house. Okay, awesome. Well, look, I have you down for 7 o'clock tomorrow. Um, look forward to meeting you and hope I can help you out, okay? Okay, sounds great. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much my phone script. But the one question in there that I was telling Will this the other day, if I can tell any new agent that's helped me that I started asking is, are you working, retired, or on disability? And the reason that's a big question, and you don't seem to think that it's that big a question, but it really dictates where you're going to put them on your schedule. So like when I first started, I didn't ask it, and I was running all over the place. Um, but now that I ask that question, if they tell me they're retired or on disability, I'm putting them where, where I want them, because you're retired or on disability, typically you're going to be home for the most part. Now, you may have to make some adjustments. But uh, if they tell me they're working, the following question is automatically perfect. What time do you get off of work? And I'm coming when you get home from work. And I don't even really ask anymore. Like when I said seven o'clock, I just go into grabbing a sheet of paper because she told me she's home by six or six thirty. And if they're not going to be there, they'll stop you and say, well, I got so and so going on. Um, but yeah, you just have to be very assumptive whenever you're uh, calling these leads and very direct whenever you're booking the appointments. But uh, if I could tell any new agent a little bit of advice um, real quick, I'm, I know I'm winding down on time, but uh, I was talking to Will this morning about like plans and strategies that we can give new agents to ensure they're successful. And, uh, you know, we can tell you get 75 to 100 leads, you know, dial till you have eight to 10 appointments and you'll be successful. But I remember I was new and I did not always book eight to 10 appointments when I first started. And you know what, that's okay. Cause you know what you can do? And this is what I tell all my new agents now. All right, you may not book eight to 10 appointments. Chances are you're probably not going to. But what you can do is you can make three to 400 phone calls a day, regardless of how many appointments you book, it'll play out, okay? So if it's one, if it's 10, all right? Once you've made your three, 400 phone calls, however it plays out, the next day you run those three, four appointments and you're very upbeat and positive about those three, four appointments, right? But guess what? You still have a hundred leads that you take with you into the field and you door knock and you fill your schedule with door knocks. And that's what you got to do until it eventually will click. And it sounds very cliche, but eventually the phones click, but until you get to that click, you have to have massive activity. Um, and I believe that if you do that, I can definitely ensure that you'll be successful. So just remember, especially starting out, if you have three or four appointments, it is okay. Massive action, and eventually the phones do click. Um, and when it clicks, I'm telling you, 
it's just like you're calling your best friend up and just telling them you're coming over. Um, so that's pretty much all I got, Corinne. I don't know if you want to touch on anything else. Yeah, um, guys, if you have a question, just throw it in the chat for me uh, very quickly. But I do have a question. Um, did you come from an insurance industry? No, I was, uh, I was actually a fitness center manager. Um, so I had no experience in like phones or insurance or really anything. Now I had sales experience, but in the fitness field. Okay, so let me ask you a question. How? Because I know in the beginning, um, you know, <laughs> Will said you, he told you to go make a bunch of mistakes, right? Oh yeah, well to quote him, he said, we're gonna send you out there and get your teeth kicked in and uh, you're gonna make a lot of money while you do it. So, and he, and he's right. yes. so how did you get good? Did you call in the home? What, what, what are some things in the beginning? Cause we got a lot of new agents on and we got a lot of agents that, you know, they, they could be really good uh, but what can help a new agent that's licensed getting out there in the field to get things going? How, how did you get really good? Did you call in the home? Did you not? How often yeah. did you talk to Will? What talk, Tell me about that. Well, I still, so to this day, so when you're new, I need three people. Um, one of them is obviously should be your upline, but uh, my three people are, I have Will, I have Rich, and then I have Mike. Very rarely do I have to get the mic. Every now and then, like if, if there's like a certain situation, I'll have to call Mike. But uh, for the most part, Will always answers. If he doesn't answer, then Rich, then Mike. But finding those three people, and I literally still to this day will call from in the home. Um, had an appointment this morning. I'll, actually, it was in the Slack group, but uh, I made two calls from now. So uh, it's just something I've kind of incorporated into my sales process. Every now and then I'll be like, all right, look, I think I know this is the best position for you, but before we do anything further, I just want to verify that we're putting you in the best position. And I just start dialing. I don't even really ask anymore. I just start dialing the phone. And they're never like, wait, who are you calling? Like, what are you doing? I mean, it's always, oh, perfect. You're trying to help me out. Um, but funny story real quick. So my very first sale, I, uh, it was my very first sale ever. I went out, I had four appointments for the day and I dialed the phones. That's why I understand where new agents are coming from. So like I get the struggle. Um, I had four appointments. I went out, ran my four appointments, didn't sell anything, um, was frustrated. I was like, man, what is going on? And uh, I had leads though. And one of the leads was right nearby my house. So I picked up the phone, dialed her, right? She answered before I could even say what I was calling about, she hung up. I was like, wait what so she lived right close to me. so i showed up at her house and she was uh push mowing her grass outside and uh, i stopped her i was like hey you know getting back to you about the life insurance i live right up the road she's like oh yeah that was you calling i'm like yes ma'am and uh sold her a policy and it was the craziest like thing i called will afterwards he was like dude massive activity always wins so like if you just show up like yeah. So. That's awesome. All right, we got we got a couple questions um, before I turn it over. Um, how much are you spending on leads each week, and what are you writing on average each week? Yeah. yeah so typically, I spend about between a thousand um, and fifteen hundred, somewhere around twelve hundred um, is my average, um, and that's you know six to eight hundred a dollar day. Um, booking for two days um, and then I normally write anywhere from eight to 10k is what I what I average so. now were you always spending that amount because I know we got a lot of new people on here that seems like a lot of money to be spending each week right but I mean did it did it what did it start out when you first started yeah well if, to, I mean I'll be honest with you so I didn't have a lot of money when I first got started um, but what I did have was a credit card and I just trusted the process. I mean, I'll be honest, I came in and, uh, Will told me what I had to do and I knew I had a credit card and I knew they would give me the money and I knew that it would play back out. So, but if you don't have access to a credit card or have the money, um, I mean, you could spend three, $400 a week and easily, you know, flip that. So. 
I mean, the one month old leaves, they're gold. They're like four dollars each. So I mean, you know, you can get a hundred of them for four hundred bucks. And if you have a hundred leads and you work them, you're gonna make a few sales. Okay. I have another question here. How do you take the emotion out of being hung up on or people being rude on the phone? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, used to, I used to let it affect me, but now it's just, it is what it is. It's part of the process. I mean, there was a, uh, actually there was a quote, I think I've said this on one of these calls before. I think it was John Wetmore. Um, he had a training and he talked about if you broke down your numbers like backwards, and uh, played it backwards. It worked out to like his numbers where every phone call he makes is like around $10. So if I told you, hey, Corinne, you know, every phone call you make, you're gonna get paid $10. How many phone calls would you make in a day, regardless of how rude they were? Actually, you'd probably be happy if they hung up because you just made $10, you know what I'm saying? And when mm -hmm. you think about it like that, I'm like, oh, okay, you were rude, you hung up, it's 10 bucks. Like, cha-ching numbers play out like that like if you work your numbers down backwards that's how it plays out and when you have that mentality um that's where it plays back on the mindset um you just have to have that mentality and when you carry that over it always works out perfect and i have one last question um it says how do you handle objections um when you're on the phone what when you're setting an appointment, how do you handle the objections? So what are some common, I guess, put, let's put it this way. What are some, last question, what are some common objections that you get and how do you handle them? Yeah, so the biggest one is gonna be, I'm no longer interested. And uh, my objection really to everything, because like I went back to on the shopping, I look at it like, okay, when I go shopping, I tell that person at the door, you know, I'm looking around, I don't need your help. And then five minutes later, I need your help. So like I know in my head, like, okay, you're spitting off because you're just spitting off. So when they say that, I just say, perfect, look, it's just my job to get you the info that you requested. Um, are you still working? And I go right back to the script. But pretty much it's always perfect, completely understand. It's just my job to get you out this info. Um, I'm gonna be out there tomorrow. Are you still working, retired or on disability? And one thing I've noticed too that I've implemented that's really helped is when I get smacked with an objection, I really don't know what to say. I always just revert back to perfect. Look, do you have a pen and paper nearby by chance? And they always just say, yeah, actually, yeah. And I, and I guess they think I'm just gonna give them my name and my contact info, but I just tell them what time I'm coming and they write it down. Like I'm like, perfect, Corinne, completely understand. Look, do you have a pen and paper nearby by chance? Yeah, give me a second. Okay, take your time. All right, my name is Bradley Murphy, all right? confirmation code this, phone numbers this. Look, any reason you wouldn't be home tomorrow at 7 p.m., because I'm gonna be out in your area, so I'll just drop this information by to you. So go ahead That's and write good. your phone tomorrow. And they normally always do it. Now, sometimes they won't have a pen and paper, and you'll be like, okay, well, you look, you text from this number? Oh, you do? Okay, perfect. Look, I'm gonna send you a text message over. I'll be out there at seven tomorrow. You just have to be very assumptive. And especially if they've already told you when they're going to be home and then they hit you with an objection. Like, you already told me what time I'm coming. So now I just got to just got to show up. But uh, that's been one big thing that's helped me um, as far as booking some of those appointments. And then the quick set appointments have become my favorite because if you tell me, like, let's say I call you, Corinne, and you say, uh, I'm working right now or sorry, I can't talk right now. I automatically know I'm gonna book you because if you grab a hold of it and just take control, they're gonna book with you to get you off the phone. I know that sounds weird, but every time they say that, I'm like, oh, perfect, Corinne, look, I know you're busy. Real quick, are you still out at the 123 Main Street? Awesome, look, I'm gonna be out in the area tomorrow. What time are you typically home from work? Seven, perfect, I'll be there at 7.30, okay? I'm gonna shoot you a confirmation text over with my name and my information. See you tomorrow at 7.30, it's just that quick. And uh, so, I mean, just don't worry so much about the objections. Just just understand that they're just spitting off at the mouth and that you got to come see them and then go back to the phone screen. That's great. That's perfect. So, guys, we don't go through anything different. We all go through the same crap. It's just how you respond to it. 
And, you know, the only way to get better is to continue to do the things that um, Brad is saying. And obviously he's getting the results. So if you do what what he's doing, I have no doubt everybody on this call can get the same results. Uh, and so, Brad, thank you again so much. I know you, you have an appointment at 1130. Um, so, again, thank you. Guys, the way that we show our appreciation to our speakers is, you know, not just getting the knowledge because knowledge is not power, but applying the knowledge um, because you, too, can change your family's future financially. You just have to apply and go to work. So, Brad, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you. And uh, we're excited about the direction you're going in and your success. Awesome, and if anybody uh, has any questions or anything, um, I don't know if you want to write down my phone number, but uh, feel free to give me a call. It's uh, 910-271-2255. All right. Do, can you say that one more time? Oh, there we go. We got it. Um, thank you. All right. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thank Brad, go crush it. Go close. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm going to bring up the next speaker, our last speaker for the day. This is, she's a fire stud, guys. I would, I would listen to what she's saying. Um, you know, I don't want to take too much time away from her. I know she's been in the insurance industry, I think about close to three years. She came from another training company. Um, she was brought into the business by a, um, a good friend of hers that she used, she actually was her manager. Um, and she came in, she was brought in, and she's only been here a week, and she has written over 50, 5,100 in production. So, Jaquette, do I have you on? Yes, I'm on. All right. Can we we, we got to see your face, girlfriend. You got to put your camera on. Okay. There you Thank go. You. Hey. Hey, what how you are can? you? Fabulous. I, you, you're out there crushing it. Thank you. All right, guys. So here's what I want you to talk about, Jaquette, right? Tell a brief, tell your brief story, okay? Um, and then go into your in-home and also, um, you know, what you're doing, what lead you're buying. Because, you, guys, she's buying these aged mailers. These are $1.50 a piece. So these are okay. like a couple years old, couple, you know, more than a couple years old, and she is just crushing it. Um, and you got that from the person that brought you in because she's always crushing the age mailers too. Jasmine yes. Falden. Yes. Okay. Yep. So what state, what state are you in? I'm in Michigan. Wow. Okay. Go ahead. Take it away, girlfriend. Hold up. Real quick. I had to put that check up there. Oh, um, yes. Okay. Jaquette. I was like, where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> that's the quest. First check from America, y'all. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to see. Her first check, her first week with FFL, $3,100. So great job, Jaquette. We're proud of you. All right. Thank you. So I did want to clarify with the age mailer leaves that I got from my manager, Jasmine, they were actually leaves that she had already dialed through. So she just gave them to me. She gave me about 75 leads just to get me started. I seen she just had a pile of them. And she was like, here, if you want to call through them, you know, and see what you can shake from out of there, you know, go ahead. And I was like, sure, th thank you. And I did book 10 appointments. So, yeah. So I just want to clarify, that's how I got my uh, start. I didn't start off with any money at all. I actually just got some leads from my manager. So I wanted to tell you guys, I am a mom of five. Um, I have a 12-year-old, an 8-year-old, a 6-year-old, a 1-year-old, and a 3-month-old. So my life is like pretty busy and pretty hectic all the time. So if I'm doing it, you know, I'm just letting everybody know, you know, you guys can do it too. Imagine what I have to go through my obstacles every day with getting kids, you know, out the door for school, daycare, getting ready, cooking and cleaning. You know, if it's possible for me, you know, it's possible for everyone. I did come from another company. Um, with that company, I'm just going to say they just wasn't as great as Family First Life, the opportunity um, wasn't as big here the opportunity pretty much is you, you take it what you make it is what it will be you don't have anyone forcing you to be something that you aren't or pushing you for something that you aren't ready for but if you are it's also there so I do like that I get to control the pace and the speed of my own career my own life and you know I'm just making it work for me so that's how I got started off um, why do I continue to stay um, in the insurance game? Because I think 
with a lot of sales jobs, what makes people run from it is people like to feel like maybe they have a product that they have to force. With insurance, this is something people actually need. And when you understand that you're bringing a benefit to their life, it's not a product that needs to be shoved down people's throat. You can kind of sell it with a passion. I go out and, you know, the reason why I have a really good return rate with my sit downs is because I believe in what I'm selling. I do believe everyone needs life insurance. I mean, I teach it to my children. I teach it to my family and friends. I believe in my product. And when I believe in my product, I speak with it. You know, I don't know if y'all can hear what I'm talking about it. But when I'm speaking to my clients, I speak with that same passion. Like, do you know what can happen to your spouse, your children, your friends or family if you leave this burden? It's real. And I always tell stories when I'm in the home. And I tell them stories that I've personally seen and have experienced. I've seen people pass away with no life insurance, like my father. And I'll just tell them the hardcore truth. He didn't have life insurance. And it was out to me at that time with the job I had to go out and work my butt off just to get him buried. But that was money I had to take out of my pocket. And it still took me like 45 days. So, you know, I just be real with them. Like, just imagine your loved one sitting in a morgue for 45 days. And I just had to work and use my money to bury him on top of my own bills with my children. So I'm letting them know that burden you are gonna leave with someone. And a lot of times they say like, oh, I'm donating my body to science or I don't want a funeral. Well, that's how you feel, but when you're gone, your loved ones may, might not wanna see you cremated or donated to science. Cause I believe that's what my dad said, but that's not what I did because that's not what I wanted for him. And I have younger sisters and I, that's not what they wanted. You know, I have an eight-year-old sister and she wanted to say bye to our father in a proper way. So I do tell them personal stories that's real because it's real. So that helps me connect with them. And then they understand like, you know what? This is not a purse. This is not shoes. This is not another bill. This is me taking care of my family. This is me taking care of my responsibility. And that's how I go about it. But to get more into how, before I even get to my storytelling, when I start off in the home, I always ask them for their ID first, because you do want to make sure they are saying who they say they are. But then I always present my ID and that builds trust. If I can show them who I am, that makes them very well comfortable for them to show me who they are. But the reason being I'm asking them for their ID up front is it helps me start to start their application as soon as I get in a home, because you know, I don't want to be there all day working on an application, then it, you know, it gets boring and you lose that interest. So most of the time, while I'm using their ID to start looking up different products for them, I'm talking to them to build a relationship for them with them. And then I'm finding a need. I do tailor fit my presentation to every client based on their need. I really listen to them. Okay, do you have a mortgage? Do you have children? Do you have debt? And then I pitch to them and I close to them based off what they tell me they need it. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? Tell us what Girl, you say. You are feeling it. Keep going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I didn't get a chance to write any of this down. So I'm just telling y'all, you know, based off like what I do every day. No, this is great. Okay, so I really listen in to the uh, client. I ask them a ton of questions to really get to know them and really find their real need. And when you get ready to show them their options, one, two, and three, you won't get a no because they know that they need it. It's not even an option. I, I have a really high uh, close ratio. 90% of people I sit with are closed because everyone has a need, right? You just have to find and ask enough questions. And then I take my time also with their budget. I make sure I always get their income. I make sure I always get their debt, whatever they paying out. I ask them, how much is your rent? How much is your cell phone bill? Yes, I get it all. How much is your DTE bill? And I write it down and I really figure out what they can afford. And then I put my packages together based on what the client told me they afford. So I don't want to get clawbacks. I don't want clawbacks, but also I don't want to get a bill that soon as something happened, the, what I sold them is the first thing they cancel. So I make sure it's room there so that they can afford whatever it is that I'm signing them up for. Does that make sense? Everybody got me? Yes, yes. we do. This okay. is good. Is there this any questions? Y'all got any questions? Y'all just listening to y'all. Like, no, this, this is good. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. 
Um, I, I just find their need. I tailor fit whatever I'm offering them directly to their need and their income. And I close them. I close them. It's really not even an option. I open my laptop. I fill it out. I show them what I have to offer them. And I submit. Jaquette, one of the things, this is Kali, you, hey. you, you are killing it, girl. Listen, so, but one of the things that I see <laughs> is that you are very, very confident. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of people, especially new people, they struggle with their confidence. What have you done? Cause that, I mean, that's, the, that really is the, that's like the make or break between making a sale, not making a sale. If mm -hmm. you feel like, if they feel like your debt, the client can feel your energy. Right. Right. And so what have you done over the, like just being here, being new, like what have you done to seem not seen, but you are like, to, but, and maybe you're not, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you're just putting on a show that you are right confident. Now, no. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, what I'm saying that's okay too. It's coming off as confident. But what you, what have you done to be so confident in this business? Just really realizing that we are all people, right? No one's more special. No one's more important. No one is better than anyone. So when I'm sitting out talking to someone, it's like talking to myself. Like I okay. just really um vibe, you know, vibe with them as just being a person, just being humble. In finding like finding that connection with them the same way I would want somebody to do with me. So that's how I get my get my confidence, just really understanding my value and then that value that the person I'm speaking with that they have too. You just have to believe in yourself and be able to be relatable. That's and everything that we are human, so we can all relate to each other in some type of way. Yeah, absolutely. What's the script? Somebody had this question. What's the script that you're using for the age leads? The script that I'm using for the age leads is the script. I believe she gave me a script on from the hub. Yeah, she gave me a script from the hub, and the uh, script was like right on the side of the lead. So you don't even know the you don't even know the script yet. You got no, I don't know the script by heart. I just read the paper. It was a script right there on the paper, and I read it. And I <laughs> okay, yep. that's good. Mm -hmm. Um. And then are you quoting, when you're in the home, Jaquette, you're quoting one company or multiple companies, right? Or you quote one company, right? When you're quoting. Well, right now, I only know about two or three. So that I'm quoting them what I know. Yeah. By it being my first week, I don't know all the products. I don't have all the information yet. I pretty much do my studying when my children take naps. And like when they go to bed. So I offered them what I know, but also it was a tool that Jasmine told me about. It was called FEX tool where you can submit that information and it'll pull up like all the people, like all the clients that would approve them. So I've been yeah. using that. The FEX but when you're tool. quoting a client, are you quoting like out of your, you just quoting one company though, right? With more than one quote, correct? I'll look at it. I'll tell them about the different options, you know, because I tell them it's for them. And, you know, I want them to have control of their life, but I can see what's the best one. And I could pretty, I pretty much know what they can afford. And I, you know, I let them say that they, I like ease them into the one that I know is the best one. And I will give them multiple options though. Yes. Okay. Now, Nadine, I, Nadine, after this, Nadine had a question. Nadine, I want you to stick with the basics though. <laughs> Jaquette is like one of the, Jaquette is advanced level. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Anybody have any more questions for um for Jaquette? Because she really like came with some good stuff. Like I think Jaquette, what I would like to do with you is um we could do a Zoom recording and we can me you can role play and so we can okay. actually do like a live like and so I mean because I because what you were saying and what you were doing is very very powerful and I think if people had like uh and we you know we've had different um. There are different resources available for this, but I think it would be good if you, like I said, you and I, we did like an actual Zoom recording, like a mock um, presentation um, and a mock closing for a client. And I can be a whole, I can be a client that's not going to be easy okay. <laughs> to close <laughs> and then we can record it and we can put that out to the team. I think that would be awesome. All right, cool. Anybody have any other questions for Jaquette? Because we have more time, guys. And she's obviously, you know, coming in here. She knows what she's doing from the door. Hi, Jaquette. This is Felicia. Good morning. 
Good morning. Hey, Felicia. Good morning. You you said you have a lot of children and you you, you organized your day. Uh, I want to know what you, your start of your day is like in the morning, getting the children out, and then what time do you start going out into the field? Okay, so I wake up at 5 a.m., that's how I start preparing myself for my day mentally, you know, spiritually, emotionally, before the kids right. even get up. I like to take my shower, drink my tea. I like to stretch, look at my to-do list. I do have a to-do list um, that I make every Sunday. And then every morning I revise it, you know, to tailor fit what I need to get done in that day. And then, you know, that's when I get my kids up. And I like to be to the office dialing at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Thank you. You're welcome. I had a quick question for you. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks for coming on, uh, man. The the call. This was like mind blowing to kind of hear everything and hear your success. This was really really cool. Um, but my question for you is: um, so you mentioned that you you offer pretty much three products to the clients, right? Mm -hmm. Which are the three that you're offering? Or come to the table. I use the FEX tool. I don't know if you guys know how the FEX tool works, but you submit it, um, the client's information, and then they'll pull up all the carriers that um, that we offer and different promotions that you know that they can offer them. So I don't have to do the searching or anything like that. I just type their name in, and it'll just pull up what the carriers have to offer them. So then I'll look at the options that fits that client's income and offer them that based off what came up on the FEX tool. It's really easy. You just submit that information, and it'll just pull up. Because I like to speak with confidence. And in order to speak with confidence, you have to know what you're talking about. So by me being so new and there being so many carriers with so many products, I just can't know all that right yet in one week. So I use the FEX tool to bring it up. And then they give you a summary of that too. So I'll sit there and read it and make sure that it's a good fit for the client that's sitting in front of me. Awesome. Thank you. You have a question. Let me jump in. Can I jump in real quick about that? Because I don't want any of the new people to get confused. So, guys, when you are doing a quote, you want to do like Jaquette said, you you want to do a quote from one. You so you she's finding the carrier that will take the the client. That's what I'm hearing. So when to keep it very simple for the very newest person on the phone. You want to find a company that will qualify the, the, the client because every company won't qualify the client depending on their health issues. And then from that one company, you want to do multiple quotes. Right. Yeah. I don't give them the multiple carriers. So they don't That's feel okay. Like That's what I was trying yeah, to say. You don't want the them to feel quest. unsafe. Like, are you just looking anywhere? No. No. I give them the quotes from that one carrier. Thank you. Okay. So, like, you want to get, so if somebody, for example, if somebody at, say, they want 10,000. Um, and coverage, let's say, for example, um, then like, what I would personally do is I will quote them high. I go really high, even though that that may not be in their budget. I'm just telling y'all how I do it. Like Eagle, the most that you can quote for Eagle is 30,000. So I'll go 30, 20 and 10. I'll give them what mm -hmm. they ask for, but I'll also go a little bit higher. And a lot of times people, even though they say they're on a fixed income or whatever the case may be, depending on the value that they place on the life insurance, they may pick higher than what they said that they needed. But mm -hmm. you want to give multiple quotes from the same company. You're not quoting them from a bunch of different companies because what you'll do is you'll confuse the client. Number, yep. number one, if you give them a bunch of quotes from different companies, they're going to choose the cheapest quote. Like, But we got we got to put them where we want them to go. That's what Jaquette right. also said. And by doing that, we're giving them three quotes from one inch, one carrier, not not a bunch of different quotes from a bunch of different carriers. And this is a way to help y'all remember it. Confused people do nothing. And so yeah. all you're gonna do is confuse And then that's why they'll be like, oh, I gotta think about it. I don't know because it's too much information. So we wanna keep it simple for you guys, keep it simple for the client. One carrier, three quotes to, to help the client. And just to clarify for you guys, the FEX tool does pull up multiple quotes from one carrier. Yes, and let me add to that too, to, to make it simple, because I, I know a lot of people have asked me, so how do you know which company to go with? I'm, you're using the order of carriers that we talk about every week, okay? The order of carriers that we use to find on the toolkit when it presents itself. So when you're using the toolkit, 
it's not, you know, right. when you're looking at a bunch of companies, it's like, okay, what's the first go-to that we look for, Jaquette? America. There you go. So you're looking for America. If you don't see America, right, right, who's right. next in line? Then who's next? In, you get what I'm saying? But on right. top of that, let me ask you a question because you can't, you came licensed from another company. Um, tell me about con how long, because you've been here a week. How long did it take you to get contract contracted? Because we have a lot of people struggling to get contracted, but there is a list, a checklist that you follow. So was contracting right. hard for you? What, what was that experience like for you? Contracting, it was not hard. Um, I just logged into the system and you requested carriers and then they'll send you an email once it's approved over a two week span. It took me about two weeks to get all the carriers that you guys um, had listed. And Perfect, just but you just followed you. the list, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, you, and I just went your, and I just You added. read your emails? Yep, you have to uh, keep uh, like in contact with your email. You have to check your email every morning. That is something on my to-do list. I check my email every morning. Yeah, so it was simple for you? Very, it's very simple, yeah. Perfect, I just wanna make sure that our system hasn't yeah. failed, that it works. No, nope. <laughs> no, you just go and you just request them. It only took me about five minutes. And it's only just a few of them that you have to like go to their actual own website. And that was still even easy. Awesome. Uh, yeah. and they'll email you. They'll email you. Um, I actually have two questions. So my first okay. question is, what do you say when people give you pushback about one of their bills or they might feel like, I don't know what my bills are month to month? I don't get the pushback because I relate to them before I even get in their business like that. Um, I just make sure I relate to them and I'm sharing with things. I'm sharing things with them about me. So I'm building trust with them. So I've never gotten pushback because they know why I'm asking them that because I make it clear we're going to go over this so that I can find you something that's good for you. I let them know I'm here to help you. Everything that I'm doing, everything I'm asking is for you. So why would somebody give me pushback on helping them? I've never gotten the pushback. But if you did, that just means that you didn't take your time and be relatable and build trust with that client, which is you should, because I mean, we're doing something very important for their family and for them. So I do take my time and make sure I build that trust. And okay. I think, I'm sorry, look, look, Kenya, let's really quickly, one of the things I wanted to just add is, does the close happen at the beginning or the end? I'm closing or when I walk in. <laughs> you, it, it, and that's what the, a lot of times people think the close is at the end mm -mm. like the sweat is doing different things throughout the presentation that she's closing the client and so yeah. and that's that so that's why she is not going to get at the end oh i gotta look over my bills because she's already taken control at the beginning of the conversation yeah. about the her, their budget their income all that kind of stuff so when yeah. somebody, get, when you get all the way to the end and somebody says, oh, I can't really afford it or whatever, you didn't do a good job of closing at the beginning and asking the qualifying questions to get them to close. That's why I think Jaquette, when we go through the role play, I think that's going to be really good because what, and it's a lot of, a lot, like a lot of the sales, what we do is a lot of psychology. And so yeah. a lot of the things that we're doing if you do those same things and say it the same way, you'll get the same results. But people leave out the things that look like they may not make a big deal in the close mm -hmm. and realize that it, we're doing certain things in the conversation for a reason. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead, Lakanya. I just wanted to add that. Uh, thank you, Colleen, uh, for clarifying more about that. Uh, so my second question is, could you go over like... Um, if it's okay with some of your to-do lists that you have and maybe like what your schedule is as far as like are you doing like a dial run day and then dial again or are you dialing and running two days or like what does that look like for you my schedule uh, my schedule is I dial one day and I run the next day I dial one day and I run the next day um, it was recommended to me by my manager Jasmine she had told me that it was working um, really well for some high performers so I just, I took that from her humbly and I applied it and it works. I did sit back and think about when I did used to dial one day and run two days that most of the cancellations and reschedules did happen that same day. 
So with me just having so many children and just having so much to do, when I'm out in the field, I want to make my day the most profitable because I really don't know what's going to come up. You know, one kid sick, one kid fits, you know, just one kid is dead, just everywhere. So I need my days to be booming when I go out. So I like the dial one day run next day. And then on my to-do list, I literally had everything on there that I need accomplished that day. All of my appointments, if I'm dialing, whatever I'm doing, picking up my kids from school, football practice, everything I need to do, I'm on, I'm on schedule with it. So I'm not getting distracted and I'm not getting off track because it's about getting done what I need to be done to be successful. So I have everything on my to-do list. I have all my alarms set to just keep me on point and keep me organized throughout today. Being organized really is going to help you too. Good stuff, Jaquette. We probably got time for one more question, guys. Anybody have any more questions for Jaquette? No? Okay. All right. So, like I said, we're going to do a role play, Jaquette. We'll figure out uh, sometime this week. Oh, um, somebody say something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a question. When y'all do the role play, can y'all do the um, appointment of the... Um, H. Miller's and then the in home and the same thing so we can see how she actually does That's it all. We actually absolutely can. That's a okay. great idea. Thank you. Uh huh. All right, guys. So the next, um, thank you all. Thank you, Jaquette, for taking out time on your schedule to pour into us. I know I learned a lot today. Like, I'm super excited about you. Um, and I'm sure everybody else is. Guys, this is going to, this call is recorded. Um, it will be on the FFL Fury YouTube page by Monday afternoon. So you definitely want to jump on and like you want to go on there and listen to this call again. And a lot like energy is uh, contagious. Right. And so Jaquette has a lot of energy, has a lot of confidence. Borrow some of that confidence and borrow some of her energy and use it on your appointments. And um, thank you again, Jaquette. Thank you again, Bradley, for taking time out, guys. The next big event we got is Monday morning live dial starting at 730 and we will see you guys then. Have an amazing week, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.